Well, if that ain't paradise, I don't know what is. It's, it's incredible. It's just amazing. We have never seen anything like this. This is the best day ever. Welcome back, guys, to another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about the top campsites we visited around our lap of Australia. Yeah, we've officially done a full lap now, yeah. so we figured it's a good time to share a bit of the knowledge that we've learned along the way. Yeah. And if you've seen any of our videos, you know we love free stuff, we love cheap stuff, so this is going to be a video all on the... Free and budget camping. Yeah, I think they're pretty much all under $20 or yeah. completely free. Yeah, so, so it's pretty good. <laughs> um, there's so many that we can't obviously talk about all of them. Mm -hmm. If this video goes well, we will keep doing them because there is so many great camp spots out there. But yeah. we've uh, narrowed it down to some of our favorite ones and we'll jump straight into the first one, I yeah, guess. Yeah, so we split them up by state. Yep. So we're gonna start with South Australia because South Australia blew us away yeah. with the awesome free camps. And I think our first stop in South Australia was the Bunda Cliffs. I'll never forget it. It just completely it, blew us away. Yeah, the cliffs are just insane and you can camp. You can camp as close as you want if, yeah. you, if you're crazy. <laughs> we stayed well back. But. Yeah, we stayed far back, but it was just an experience and a half. The way the cliff just just drops just yeah. like that was just spectacular we got some epic drone footage there. and it was a bit windy but i think yeah. one day that we were there we lucked out a bit and we were able to get the yeah. drone up but saw dolphins down there yeah and uh it's free completely so, free yeah and it's not too far off the nullarbor so yes put that on your list it is a wicked campsite What's number two? Next on the list for South Australia was Paloobi Beach. Oh yeah, that so, was one of my favourites. Yeah, that's one of Jack's favourites of the whole entire trip. It was just completely flat, yep. clear Amazing. blue water. Watching the tides come yeah, in and out was really out. cool as yep. well. That one was $10 and you paid by an honesty box, but yep. there was flushing toilets there. Yeah, there was. Well, so. And there's a lot of caravans there right at the start. If you look on Instagram, you'll find a lot of photos there and there's some cool huts mm -hmm. that if you're lucky, you get in uh, yeah, first, like you can get them. Yeah, type things. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. And uh, you can easily launch your boat there. There was heaps of people fishing. It's just a wicked curved beach. Yeah, it's like a bay. Yeah, it's really, really nice. And that I'll, I'll be back there straight away when we go to South Australia. 100%. 100%. So keeping on with the awesome beach camps in South Australia because that is what makes that state so amazing. Yeah. Another free one that we visited was Greenlee Beach. And that was just another stunning beach, completely free. Yeah. No facilities or anything like that there, but... That's the one with the rock pools, eh? Yeah. Oh, you mate. can go rock pool hunting for days around there. Yeah. And it was it's so, awesome. so cool. We didn't get to see the nicest... Oh, we saw the nice rock pools, but it was pretty busy at the time. You can literally just go forever and you will find a rock pool to yourself. That was the highlight of that. And we're not surfers, but we did yeah. see quite a few surfers out there as well. Lots um, of surfing going Not on. sure. Yeah, I guess it must be a pretty cool, <laughs> pretty good surf spot. Pretty good barrels. Considering how many... <laughs> <laughs> people were out there but when we were going for swims and stuff we we're like geez it's rocky out here I don't know yeah but we didn't I don't get... know we're not surfers so. yeah no we don't know so and the fishing is good there was heaps of people catching big tailors there as well mm -hmm. um, we didn't get much footage of these uh, two last camp spots we've just told you yeah the Bundy Cliffs we did but yeah we we kind of stopped filming we because like we said we didn't set off to do the whole YouTube thing so yeah, we we're just sort of yeah. getting little clips here and there yeah. and we only started a, a bit further on in South Australia, so... Yeah, but we'll be back again to yeah. get some proper vlogs done, yeah. I think. <laughs> 100%. All right, so moving on into Victoria then. Yeah. We didn't spend as much time in this state as we would have liked to, but obviously because of the whole... Lockdown situation. ...virus that must not be named, uh, we just sort of sped through, but that didn't stop us from finding some awesome free camps. Yeah. So the first one that we visited, I think it was pretty much after, just after we crossed the border, yeah, we right visited there. Fort O'Hare hair campground which was an awesome awesome free. free camp again with a drop toilet it's backing onto the Glenelg River so you could go yeah. for a little swim if you wanted to and that was our first encounter with koalas we mating koalas we didn't actually <laughs> see them but we heard them and yeah. it was 
Oh my gosh. I thought they were pigs. Just do a quick YouTube search of what sound does a koala make. Yeah, and it's a classic. It's so funny. <laughs> it is odd. <laughs> but yeah, if you're lucky, you might actually be able to spot one there because yeah. we have seen photos on wiki camps of people actually spotting the koalas yeah, there. Yeah. That was, that was a great introduction to Victoria if you're going that way around like what we did. Yeah, the that, beautiful that trees and Whole scenery change. Life. I think we ended up spending close to a week there because yeah. we were... That's actually, fun fact, that's where we filmed our rig rundown, rig rundown video. video. So, <laughs> nicely spread out um, camping as well. Yeah. Obviously, we wouldn't have done it if people were on top of us no. standing there with the camera. So, so yeah, that's one really to nice. put on the list if you're going that way. Yep, and Clock, then anti clockwise. Next up, if you're going from that way, heading towards Melbourne, as you're doing the Great Ocean Road, do not miss the Otway National Park. Oh, you have to go. It was incredible and it was nuts. Found a free camp right in the middle of this amazing, dense, ancient rainforest, and that was Air Crossing air crossing i'll never forget that yeah well that, that was our first ever rainforest experience that we'd ever had and that's the uh, first ever huntsman experience we've had oh, as well yeah that's when we that's got our we little picked up our little friend hitchhiker <laughs> so yeah uh, be wary of that seal your doors up but yeah just amazing amazing dense yeah. rainforest um even a little spring nearby as well it was freezing cold but if you got a nice sunny day it, it would was be pretty beautiful good. We, we, that will be one to never forget that mm -hmm. that just driving into that forest and seeing the size of the trees mm -hmm. and just stepping back and thinking that like, these are years old yeah it was incredible <laughs> okay so moving on into new south wales our first campground there we have got manus lake yeah once a, it, again we crossed the border yeah and that was and our was first, first one is our introduction to new south yeah. wales and we were just blown away it was massive, spectacular massive wasn't it? lake uh, you could watch the sun go down and watch the mountains change colour just yeah. across the lake and it was just beautiful. And behind you where you're camping is a state forest and oh, it's yeah, got the right. uh, massive pine trees I think mm -hmm. they are. That was cool. And completely free and had nice clean flushing toilets as well. Yes it did. And But it's not a very big campground so you mm -hmm. need to get in early Yeah. Um, with that one but definitely worth it. Yeah and no so. one like camped up right next to no, you or anything plenty, like that. There's, it was... there's plenty of room but it's not massive. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? Next up in New South Wales is moving to the completely opposite end. Yeah. So on the Queensland border, we've got <laughs> Sheep Station Creek Campground, which was another beautiful rainforest day. This one was part of the Border Rangers National Park. So being a national park, yeah. uh, it cost money and you had to book online for that one. I believe it was $12 per person per night, which actually makes that the most expensive campground that we've got on this list yeah. today but and <laughs> it's not that bad though yeah no definitely not that bad when you think about how much uh wa national parks yeah. can sometimes charge 20 dollars per person per night so. exactly it had fire pits drop toilets and it had a walk that takes you to the most spectacular waterfall yeah and it's not just the waterfall it's the walk to the waterfall. yeah the whole walk through the yeah. rainforest up to brush box falls yeah. was amazing and i think there might have been a couple of walks that you could do yeah. there's definitely quite a few around the whole border ranges yeah. national park but oh, there's heaps. starting from that campground was just absolutely stunning walks from there there's a bit of history in that campground as well there was the guys years ago i can't remember off the top of my head but they would cart massive trees down the mountains there and the way they did it and how they like how they did it is it's written on the wall as you're doing the walk and it's just amazing mm -hmm. you, you gotta go there <laughs> or google it and the sound of the birds at sunset as well yep. was just incredible it's awesome like we said victoria and new south wales we didn't spend too much time there because of the whole um situation that's going on in the world mm -hmm. um so we didn't visit too many places so we've got to go back but those were some standout places for those two yeah, um, states so moving on to queensland we loved it loved it not only because there's heaps of free camps but the national park camping as we said before compared to new south wales 12 dollars per person yeah. per night queensland six dollars fifty $6. per person per night and the national park camping it was so hard for us to narrow down. We ended up picking five for Queensland yep. that were standouts for us, but there were so many amazing national park sites. Yep. So we'll start with Awinya Creek. Oh, mate. If you've seen any of our videos, you know how much we loved Fraser Island. Just the and whole island. Yeah, but this <laughs> one was definitely number one yep. campsite. It for actually might be the best campsite I, we have ever stayed at. Mm -hmm. It was just stunning. To get to Awinya Creek campgrounds there, you have to go through a creek crossing, only at low tide, otherwise it's impassable. Mm -hmm. So get your times right. 
and you can uh, access it from the beach but obviously the creek is the more common one that people come through and the road in is very rough but yeah. it was so worth it that was probably one of our top sunsets that yeah, we've had that was amazing someone well. proposed to their partner oh yeah we spoke about it in the fraser vlogs <laughs> um so that was a cool little part of the trip yeah but yeah just hot tips for there obviously make sure the tide's down and make sure you've got enough fuel to get you there because it is further than you think yeah. and it takes a long time More further than we thought anyway. yeah the whole fraser <laughs> island is bigger than what you think it is so go prepared with a lot of fuel because it is expensive on that uh, island Fraser Island as a whole is a must see mm -hmm. and uh, it's all booked online so yeah yeah all national park easy. ones nice and cheap and yeah. yeah although I don't know how many people actually book it yeah I think a lot of people just free camp it so but do the right thing guys yeah <laughs> it's only six bucks uh, so what's the next one next one on the list we went to Notch, Notch Point. Point I think everybody knows about this one yeah free and it is if you're coming from that same south way that we yeah. came that's your first real tropical whoa vibes. we're in the tropics <laughs> it's so cool yeah. that bright blue water crocodiles tides, palm trees yeah. and the watching the tides come in and out as well it's yeah. so beautiful it was a bit windy on the day we went there but you can see that when there is no wind there and it is a pristine day it would be next level yeah we definitely could have spent a week there for sure uh, but the road in is a bit rough if you want to get to the primo spot where mm -hmm. we were uh, you need to do a bit of a yeah it was like a big rutted hill, hill down but there might have been other ways around because there was some pretty big caravans in there so yeah definitely put it on the list yeah and What's next next up we've got another national park one yeah this one surprised us yes we just rocked up we just rocked up and ended up staying for a, a week, week and a half we uh, did a vlog on it yeah we'll so link it up this top. was the platypus campground on lake tinaru yeah and i don't know what it was about it someone else could visit the same campground and think Probably oh yeah like it's a bit it. average but for us there was just a vibe about it yes it was just so calming, calming yeah yeah it was calming mm -hmm. that's what it was and then a hot tip is number 16 17 or 18 mm -hmm. book those sites because those you're are the right best on ones. the lake and yeah again yeah. beautiful sunsets uh national park one fire pits and drop said. toilets fire pits and drop to no they were flushing toilets flushing toilets mm. and water available as well oh, not yeah, not to drink right. though so you got to boil it first mm -hmm. And uh, you can fish and all kinds of things. So. Yeah, so that one was close to the Atherton Tablelands as well. Yeah. So yeah, that was really nice, nice and affordable camp for sort of exploring that area yeah. as well. So put it on the list, guys. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have got Lake Proserpine. Uh, this one is sort of close to the Airlie Beach area. Yeah. So if you visited that area, you know that the caravan parks and things like that can be quite expensive. Yeah. So this one is completely free and it was beautiful. It's got showers and flushing toilets. Showers at a free campsite. Yeah. We and were gobsmacked. I think it's not going to be free for much longer mm. from what I was reading on the Wiki Camps reviews. But yeah, it was really nice and spaced out and just And awesome. everyone was really friendly. <laughs> yeah, we met lots of people there. Yeah, we had chats with so heaps of people there. So a lot really of like-minded nice. people no reception though no phone reception oh yeah that's right um we should have been telling you actually if it had phone reception or not mm. um but most of these places do in the description we're going to list everything in yeah. the description below and then we will pop down which ones have phone reception yeah, yeah. or not just to let you know <laughs> um and all of these are on wiki camps as well yeah and all of them are on google maps as well yeah. So we're going off track. <laughs> we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Yep. And um, last one for yep. Queensland was Leichhardt Falls. It was amazing. Another completely free one that is quintessential Queensland <laughs> Aussie outback. It was awesome. It was so beautiful. So many different species of birds. Freshwater, freshwater crocodiles. Freshwater crocodiles. Incredible sunsets. Yeah. Perfect weather. If you get there a bit later in the season, so make sure, because it, it would get hot. Mm -hmm. It would get so hot there if you go at the wrong time yeah so we went there and it was just it was perfect and even when you wake up in the morning and then also i think depending on the time of year that you go as well would be really cool to oh, see yeah. it in different times of the year because the, the falls would be flowing yeah. as well and uh, apparently the water rises insanely yeah and, and once again it was spaced out you have no worries with other people coming close to you or anything <laughs> so that was brilliant yeah um we spent we spent a few days there mm -hmm. we would have spent longer if we had more supplies yeah so uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much Queensland. Yeah. Um, we could go on and on and on about Queensland. Love it. There's so many more. 
but those are some of the main ones that stuck out. And then we made our way over to the Northern Territory. Yep. So what did we find there? For Northern <laughs> Territory, as you would have seen, we didn't spend too, too long, long there, there as well. And also we spent a bit of time in a motel room, so yeah. <laughs> not as much camping done as we usually no. would do. But one of our favorite campsites that we stayed in there was the Sandy Creek campsite. Yeah. Litchfield National Park. Yeah, eh? that's part of the Litchfield National Park and walking distance to Janeiro Falls, yeah. which was one of our favorite waterfalls that we visited. I think also what made it cool was not only the waterfall, but you have to do a creek crossing there. Oh yeah. And it's pretty fun. That like, was one of the biggest, at the time, that was the, the biggest one we'd done. Yeah, it adds to the experience and yeah. you're just like, oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That one was also a national park one. That's ten dollars per person per night, and it's on a first come first serve basis. Yep. I think there's fourteen sites. Yeah. So that one did get quite busy. Yep. I think we rocked up at about one o'clock and we snagged, snagged the last it. spot. So I'd say get there earlier in the morning to try and snag yourself a spot. Yeah. And make sure you bring some change. Like, don't bring fifty dollar notes. Yeah, because it was um, just an honesty box. No yep. ranger ended up coming around to collect or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So, so make sure you got the right money for that. Yep. And that one had drop toilets or flush it had flushing toilets flushing. and it had sinks and it had, a sh it had showers as well oh yeah that's right cold. all of these showers are cold there's no hot showers yeah um, but yeah it had showers so yeah beautiful. that was good and all the campsites were nice and flat yeah and even though it was quite busy they're really really spread out sites yeah. as well so yeah and the waterfall like Megan said was spectacular yeah so, so yeah. that was our only real specific campsite that we put on our list for northern territory but that being said we stayed in some pretty awesome gravel pits yeah <laughs> while we were there like that sounds weird to say but yeah. some of them had wildflowers and the sunsets are just spectacular and a lot of them are right near towns or right near national yeah. parks so that was a good thing about northern, northern territory that we noticed straight away after we crossed the queensland border free campsites everywhere yeah and until you get close to like darwin yeah so we spent a majority of our time in Northern Territory as a whole was spent in this one yeah. free camp just north of Catherine. So yeah, great base to explore um, Catherine Gorge, yeah. Nitmaluk National Park and all of that we'll sort of We'll put thing. the name in there for that one. Does it have a name? It does have a name on oh, Wiki okay. Camps. So it's, it's actually a primo spot. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. good. And you're guaranteed a spot when you go there as well. Yeah, so it was really, really big. big. Yeah, that's Northern Territory done. It was Litchfield National Park that stood out for us. That was that was just spectacular mm -hmm. and then that particular sandy creek uh campsite stood out that was awesome Alrighty, so wa our home state where we are now mm -hmm. it's got a bit of a rap for not having many free camps especially in the south yeah the, south of wa gets pretty bad yeah but, but um, we did find one <laughs> free camp right near esperance most is popular part dun rocks so yeah. you can go for free it's part of the national park so you need your national parks pass yeah but, but i don't think anyone's coming if no. you're spending <laughs> lots of time in wa it's a good idea yeah. to get your annual pass as well because Definitely. that would save you loads of money yeah. but yeah dun rocks off yeah. the coast of Esperance. You need a capable four wheel drive. Yep. Um, you definitely need a four wheel drive for that. It's soft sand. Mm -hmm. But once you pass that little bit of soft sand and you park up, it's just, it's kind of like, um, what's that other beach at Esperance, the most popular one? Lucky Bay. Yeah, Lucky Bay. It's, it's like that. Yeah, well, I mean, just to be able to camp looking out at that Esperance blue water for yeah. free. That's what did it for us. You're winning. Yeah, it was awesome. You could spend a week there as well. And it wouldn't be too far as well to sort of use it as a, as base, a base and yeah. explore all the other sort of beaches yeah. in the area. And People were definitely using it as a base to yeah. explore. Uh, if you have a caravan as well, you can get your caravan in before you go on the beach because we camped on the beach there but there's spots where you can park your caravan up and leave it there. Mm -hmm. And there's dump, there's toilets there. Yeah, that's right. There's uh, not the best toilets, but there's <laughs> toilets there. So yeah, that, that's one for south of WA in Esperance mm -hmm. there. And the next one is Myrie Pool. Mm -hmm. Now this one just popped out of nowhere. Yeah, and when we visited this campsite last year, yeah. we weren't really familiar with free camping really and staying in any sort of rest stop type things yeah. or gravel pits. We'd never really done anything like that. The only free it was all camping- new to us. Yeah, the only free camping we'd ever done was beach camping. So. This little gem of a spot just yeah. blew us away. It was camping right on the Nullagene River yeah. and there was a rope swing 
toilets up the top if you wanted to camp down by the river you sort of had to go down a bit and you of need a, a very you need a capable full drive oh yeah that's right that was one of the um, first times you had to use the locker yeah if you haven't got a diff locker <laughs> you can't really go there because you won't make it back out there was probably other there's spots definitely that you spots there got, yeah. but we snagged a really good one we got we got the primo one <laughs> it was it was awesome yeah but um, that's where we lost the drone as well yeah like, i flew okay. the drone into a tree there so <laughs> i've got that on film actually if you find a drone <laughs> let us know <laughs> So yeah, that, that one was not far from Caratha. Yes, that's I'm pretty right. Sure. Yeah. The next one moving up north of WA is Winder Bandy Point, close to Exmouth. Exmouth yep. Yeah. How much was that one? That was eight dollars per person per night. So 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 cheap. That's yep. cheaper than any of the national park ones in the Cape Range National Park, yep. and you still get that beautiful Exmouth blue water. Oh mate. You do need to have your own toilet to stay there. I believe that a camp host comes around and checks. Yep, but I he didn't. Don't think he did when we were there. We were but... there for three days and he didn't. So. But yeah, I love when a beach comes to a point like that and you oh. can watch the tides come in. It was so it's good. It's just so cool. And the, the campsites are really spaced out. Yeah. Um, and the white. Oh, it was just awesome <laughs> we're going back there 100% <laughs> so yeah put that one on your list and the last one in WA that Lucky is last. a massive standout for us mm -hmm. and we're actually here right now it is beautiful it is called James Price Point now James Price Point is about a hundred kilometers of coastline and it's all free you got Bard Creek, Quandong Point, uh, James Price Point mm -hmm. and there's a few other ones Willie Creek I think it is yeah and you just you can snag just some pretty much drive spots. up the coast and just pick where you like and yeah, the red dust meets the white sands and the yeah. blue water it's just um, incredible i think that's number one on our wa list we've spent four days here at the moment it's just wicked mm -hmm. <laughs> um and watching the tides go out like 300 meters 400 yeah, meters those out, broom tides. and it comes all the way back in is just something to witness mm -hmm. so yeah that's all the uh campsites that really stood out for us like we said there is so many more yeah and what um, really does it for us with the campsite as well is whenever we rock up somewhere yeah and even if we don't plan to stay for a night and we just think to ourselves we could stay here for a week those are the longer. campsites that stand out yeah um you, it's the least expected ones mm -hmm. and the ones you find that you weren't planning on yeah finding. exactly and like we said we've got so many others that we could share so let us know yeah. if that's something you'd be interested in definitely and also like we said we'll put everything in the description to let you know if there's toilets there full driving all of them are on wiki camps mm -hmm. um so if you haven't got wiki camps you need to get it oh yeah it's the best seven dollars 99 you'll ever spend <laughs> we've basically done our whole lap off wiki camps yeah so yeah we will uh, do that for you and hopefully you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you then. See you later.